I'm about to launch from the shadows like a lion on the grind coming at you. I'm a menace for the vengeance, so relentless. Hope you're ready, cause I'm here to battle. Keeping me awake to the late night. Thinking about a wrong, I'ma make right. When you see me, better take flight. Feeling in my veins, and I'm all out of play nice. And it's by bygone to the bygone. Ain't no turning back when the fight's on. When you see the white in my eyes, better run, better hide. No surviving what I'm on. I ain't here to play around. If I were you, I would run right now. Make your feet bang, bang on the ground. Cause I'ma hunt you down, down, down. I'ma hunt you down. I'ma hunt you down, down, down. Yeah. Cause I'ma hunt you down. I'ma hunt you down, down, down. up guys dashing here and we are live here at battle scars eight my fun feather friends and we are jumping straight into the action as always a stacked card truly from top to bottom as ellie quinn and keo make their way to the ring we are going to get things started with the Women's Tag Team Championship on the line. Ellie Quinn and Keo prepared to challenge the China Poland Connection. And if you enjoy tag team action, then you are most certainly going to want to stick around because we've got a lot of tag team action here tonight at Battle Scars 8. Welcome, welcome. Great to see everyone. Who leaked that card? I think it might have been Tracy James. Well, over these last few weeks, I should say, the only thing whack around here is uh, nah, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> the China Pulling Connection making their way to the ring and many feeling as though they might have some sort of advantage coming into this championship matchup because over the last few weeks there's been a lot of rumors swirling within the CMB universe about some tension, some friction between Keo and Ellie Quinn. Now both Quinn and Keo have denied that, have claimed that there is no beef whatsoever that they are strong they are united and prepared to leave here tonight the new women's tag team champions whether or not that's factual we're gonna find out for sure here tonight battle scars 8 getting kicked off back at ascendance 10 that ellie quinn Lost her Women's World Championship without even being pinned. It was a Fatal 4 match, guys. And Keo was the one that was pinned by Kate Strongheart, who, by the way, will be defending that Women's World Championship a little bit later on tonight against Maggie Shaw during the media scrum after the Ruler of the Ring event. Many of those reporters were pressing Ellie Quinn, almost seemingly like trying to get her to speak ill of her friend and tag team partner Keo, but Ellie Quinn was not having any of it. She said she doesn't blame Keo. They all knew what was on the line, what the matchup entailed, that Fatal 4 in a sentence 10. And it could have gone either way. Anything could have happened. Ellie Quinn says she wants to become Women's World Champion again, but more than happy to team up with her friend here tonight. Look for some gold in the tag team division. Keo has been also touting the fact that she would like a, another shot at the Women's World Championship. In fact, Ellie Quinn was asked by one reporter during the media scrum, how do you feel about Keo potentially getting that shot before you? And Ellie Quinn said, hey, as long as I get my shot eventually, 
I don't care who I have to face to become Women's World Champion. Once again, and Keo, very early on. That figure four broken up, though, by Riley Van Wilson before this match ends. In the first couple of minutes, Riley Van Wilson thrown down to the outside. I'm sure shaorong has got a uh, sore jaw right now. A couple of nights ago on Octane. Getting absolutely blasted by Ashley Riot in that six woman tag team match. I just be distracted with Riot breathing down her neck. What we heard from Riley Van Wilson last night on Twitter calling for a sort of. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like a sit down between. Ashley Riot and Shao Wong. Riley Van Wilson saying she'll mediate and get to the bottom of this. Can't have her current tag team partner, and her former tag team partner, former protege beefing. RBW does not want to get in the middle of it as she takes out Ellie Quinn with that X Plex and now a tag to Shao Wong. Yo, taken out for the moment. Our first of many championship matches here tonight, guys. A hell of a show overall. Of course, our main event going to see the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship on the line as the workhorse Jeremy Barmore will challenge the big dog Pierre Thompson. First time one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be a doozy. Two big lads slapping me. We'll also find out who's going to be next in line for a shot at that undisputed World Heavyweight Championship as we will... Once and for all, crown the rightful king of the ring. It's going to be Jay Young. It's going to be Hunter Quinn. No disqualifications. A king of the ring must be crowned one way or the other. Dropping Ellie Quinn face first onto the top rope. Off down to the corner with that alley oop. Pushed back, though, by Quinn. Ellie Quinn, Keo, along with Gianna Di Natale coming into CMB together at the top of this new season. They all have already had immense success, but just to think for a minute, it's really only been a few months they've been in CMB, and they're already established names. I truly believe all three of them are going to go on to be all of favors years from now. Even though both Ellie Quinn and Keo separately focused on the Women's World Championship as they claim they are 100% focused on this match here tonight. Keo will try to get Xiaorong into the corner. Butterfly suplex sort of. Xiaorong makes the tag to the Polish Warrior. Frequent tags by both teams here. Of course the China pulling connection. Reuniting at the top of this new season. Two-time women's tag team champions. Their first defense of their second reign. And they make it past Keo and Ellie Quinn as Keo is able to get out of that collar and elbow tie-up. This is indeed the first match. Women's tag team championship on the line. As Riley Van Wilson nails Keo with a snap vertical suplex. Beautified. World Tag Team Championship on the line a little bit later on. Alvarez and El Lucha Loco challenge chain reaction. Oh! Xiaorong just the biggest. Dominico Zicardi fan hitting the Z spot there, but Keo gets the rope break. Very lucky, man. Imagine if we would have had a screw job in this championship match. Not finished, though. Xiaorong from the corner. Oh, man! She just went for a, a punt kick. Xiaorong is not playing around here tonight. We're going to take Keo's head off, but luckily Keo able to see it coming. Cannot avoid that left hook, though. Xiaorong very, very aggressive here tonight. Look at these stomps. And whoa, trouble in paradise out of nowhere. One, two. Not enough to keep Xiaorong down. That shows you just how dangerous Keo is, though, man. She can come truly out of left field. A moment's notice, tag to Ellie Quinn. Also a hot tag made to Riley Van Wilson. He takes Ellie Quinn down. Clean kick right across.
across the chest. And now Riley Van Wilson gonna do what she does best. Isolate a body part and go to work. Looks like it's gonna be that left knee. Now the full mount. You do not want to exchange fisticuffs with Riley Van Wilson. Just slapped across the face. China pulling connection all together here tonight, man. Rough and rugged. I don't know if Keo and Ellie Quinn are ready for it. Cross armbar locked in. If she can pull back, China pulling connection can retain the women's tag team championship at Keo with a save there. Shout wrong. Gonna send her down to the outside. Riley Van Wilson keeping on the attack. Quick kick to the side of the head by Ellie Quinn though. And look at that. Quick gonna go right up to the top rope, perhaps looking for the 450 splash. But instead, a drop kick. Back up to the top rope. Riley Van Wilson will not stay down though. Left leg and one salt. Unable to connect. Keo and Shaoron continuing to fight at ringside. As Riley Van Wilson tries to wear down that shoulder a little bit more. Try to lock in the. Ross Armbar again, beautiful sort of modified Uranagi just threw her right overhead. And look at this Indian Deathlock. Ellie Quinn trying to beat Riley Van Wilson at her own game here. Oh. Indeed she is to kill a sunrise. Applied by Ellie Quinn. Can she get a submission out of Riley Van Wilson? I almost thought she tapped right there, but no. Barefoot, right up under the jaw. Might have gotten a big toe. Of it. Going after that arm yet again, but Ellie Quinn says, enough is enough, get off my arm. If I were Ellie Quinn, I'd be looking to make a tag right now. Inverted Frankensteiner. Changing the complexion of this match real quick. Uranagi! Quinn handed him out. Like candy on Halloween here. She makes the tag to Keo. Riley Van Wilson looking up the lights, but perhaps playing possible. She's able to push Keo back. Knife edge chop avoiding collar number tie up. Pendulum backbreaker. Right into the pit. Perhaps desperate here is Keo. Will it be enough to capture the women's tag team championship? No, it will not. But look at this 21! 21, pretty apropos. This is the event where Shea Hudson debuted many years ago. Oh, no, we'll tie up. Double leg takedown into the full mount. Open palm strikes, trying to get through Ellie Quinn's defenses. Not much luck, though. As the hot tag is made to Keo, a tag also made to Shao wrong. Can't give Keo too much distance, though. Speak that Tanahashi clothesline or the Trouble in Paradise. Look at that snap. Dragon suplex gets a two count tag to Riley Van Wilson. Up very, very slowly. Goes to that knee, Keo. Making her think twice about her cravat suplex. Going to the corner, Keo. Gonna keep the pressure on the head and neck. Very impressed by both these teams so far. Frequent tags, as we know, the name of the game, keeping yourselves as fresh as you can. Grabbed by the arm, tag to Shao Rong. Oh, Kim Shotsa! Shao Rong saying, hold this one real quick. Oh, Keo tripped up Murphy as she was getting into the ring. Murphy tripped, otherwise, that might have been a three count, if not a very close two count. I don't know if Keo did that intentionally or if that was an honest mistake, but one way or the other, lucky for Ellie Quinn. Dragon in the corner, certainly not where Ellie Quinn wants to be. Wait a minute! The China pulling connection with some teamwork here. Beating the hell out of Ellie Quinn in the corner. Fires back with it up in the midsection. Oh, and Evie face. Trip to the dentist and a discus forearm smash. Another forearm smash. Probably Van Wilson getting bu -bu -bu blasted right now as Quinn with the vintage schoolboy suplex. Probably Van Wilson's in bad shape right now. 
Yo in off the tag, notices that Riley Van Wilson is hurt and gonna try to put her down for good with the Tanahashi clothesline. Riley Van Wilson sees it coming. Oh, goes to the double knee face breaker and hits it. Hooks the leg for the win. Udo. No, no spell. Ellie Quinn, a little bit too late. Gonna throw Shao wrong into the corner. Keo with a spine buster. Referee Murphy having a bit of trouble maintaining order here in our opening matchup. The Women's Tag Team Championship on the line. Not good, guys. Cross arm bar locked in. Ellie Quinn being dealt with that ringside. She's not going to be any help here. Pulling back. Pulling back on the arm. And Keo has no choice but to tap. Ellie Quinn being preoccupied by Shao Rong at ringside. And Riley Van Wilson, great time there. Saw the opening and pounced. The China pulling connection still. The women's tag team champions. Up, but like I said, Riley Van Wilson, the veteran man, as soon as she saw that Kia was by herself, Shao Rong keeping Ellie Quinn busy at ringside, locked in that cross arm bar, holding back. Kia had no choice but to tap. And the China Poland connection are still the women's tag team champions. And the action not going to stop anytime soon here at Battle Scars 8, my friends. We just kicked off the show in a big way. Great matchup with the China Pulling Connection retaining the Women's Tag Team Championship. And coming up next, Leon Gara with some cojones on him. Credit where it's due. Calling out Duo Maxwell for this matchup here tonight. Part of a triple threat matchup a couple of weeks ago where the winner would receive a shot at the Intercontinental Championship. That match, of course, won by Chris Diamond. He gets his shot later on tonight, challenging John Reed, but Leon Gauta infatuated with Duo Maxwell and what he represents during that match. Afterwards, calling out the Angel of Death for a matchup 
here at Battle Scars 8 has Leon Gara signed his own death wish. I don't know the same man who would want to step into the ring against the seven foot tall, 300 plus pound, currently undefeated one on one, former undisputed world heavyweight champion, Duo Maxwell. Leon Gata looking for a huge win though. If he can somehow put Duo Maxwell down, be the first man to do so this season since Duo Maxwell returned to CMV. I'm sure he is currently seeing all the success that his former tag team partner, Danger Cat, is having. You know, becoming the internet champion, being named the spokesperson of Waffle House. Leon Gata looking for some success of his own. Could it become number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship? But again, if he can topple the Angel of Death here tonight, forget about it. Leon Gata gonna put himself on the path. A bright future on Shockwave. But of course, easier said than done because that is the man that Leon Gata has been pining to face off against one-on-one. -on -one. Seven foot tall, 300 plus pounds, has main event in ascendance, a former undisputed world heavyweight champion, and since returning to CMB a few months ago has been annihilating everyone put before him. That includes Gurry at Ascendance 10. Yeah. Well, Maxwell, I'm sure, even though he wouldn't say so himself, he's the silent type, lets his actions speak for him. Probably a bit miffed at the fact that Leon Gata was the one pinned in that triple threat match. Duo Maxwell made his intentions clear by attacking John Reed a few weeks ago. He wanted that shot at the Intercontinental Championship. It was taken away from him, though, thanks to Leon Gata. Here we go, Leon Gata, has he dug his own grave, if you will, here tonight at Battle Scars 8. Or can he find a way to outmaneuver the Angel of Death and score a massive dub? Gotta do Will Maxwell one on one. Our second matchup of the evening. A true David versus Goliath scenario. But again, you can't feel bad for Leon Gotta. This match wouldn't be happening if he didn't want it to. Oh, a sidewalk slam straight out the gate. Gotta able to get right back up. Do Will Maxwell stand on top of him. I have a whole hell of a lot to look forward to here tonight, my friends. Got the Intercontinental Championship on the line. Chris Diamond challenging John Reed. We've got Gabriel Seto and Andre Rogers inside of a steel cage. We've got what is no doubt going to be the greatest matchup of this season so far, perhaps of all time. But these fans live in attendance, all of you watching at home will be graced with the Ted on your screens. By his side, just a little old me. We're going to annihilate those punks, Machine Gun Kelly and Post Malone. And then you've got the King of the Ring and the main event and all that, but that's the match you really need to be looking forward to. Springboard Moonsault misses though, does Leon Gata. That's gonna create an opening for Duo Maxwell, unable to capitalize though, missed that punch. Neither man having very good accuracy here. As Leon gets dropped. 
Face first on the top turnbuckle. And pulled out of the corner. And now, double leg drop. All of that weight down onto the knees of Gata. Forget about it. About to take a shot at the midsection. See Gata going after those legs, trying to eliminate the face. Slowly exits the ring. Duo Maxwell takes his time, and he's never in a rush. Everyone else works on Duo Maxwell's time. It's that stomp. Tries to go for the Hunakarana, but it's almost like Maxwell has an impenetrable force field around him. Running into a brick wall. Gotta just cannot catch a break, man. He's trying to grapple Duel Maxwell, trying to do all he can to get a lid on the Angel of Death, but there's simply nothing that he can do. Physics is against him here. Up to a count of seven already as Duo Maxwell annihilates that left knee of Leon Gata. Throws him right into the ring apron. Gata needs to come up with something. He is no idiot. Gata, former international champion, former internet champion, former pure champion, and a former Unified World Tag Team Champion. But he is being made to look like a rag doll at the hands of Duo Maxwell here. At a count of 12, Duo Maxwell, I thought for a second he might try to take the count out win, but he actually breaks the count. He's not finished. He's not finished inflicting pain and agony. Oh no! Oh no! Leon God! <laughs> Just yeeting Gata ribs first into the LED post. My award. Look at this. Gata is being dismantled before our very eyes. Throwing him again into the apron. And finally. Trying, I thought, there we go. Got it with a sign of life. Don't ask me how in God's name he's still standing. Throws Maxwell gut first into the steel steps. Tries for a kick, but Maxwell gonna catch that. It's like Duo's just waiting around every corner, man. As soon as Leon Gata puts in some sort of offense, Maxwell just immediately shuts it down. Back up to a count of 10. Duo Maxwell back into the ring. Gonna again break the count, man. He's no danger cat, man. He ain't gonna win by count out here tonight. Gets out of that fireman's carry position. Shot to the cut. Leg drop, Bulldog! There we go, the big man off his feet. Just gets right back up. Leon Gata gonna help him. As again, he uses the steel steps, but Duo just deciding not to take that fall this time. And look at Gata! Once again, I had to say the cojones, man. He just is egging Duo Maxwell on. Springboard drop kick, catching Maxwell off guard as he was getting back into the ring. Drop kick down to the back of the head. Another springboard moonsault. Duo moves out of the way. There's someone his size, man. He can move. And just like that, a close on from the deepest depths of hell. One, two, three. And Duo Maxwell seals the deal. That was as one-sided as one-sided gets. Duo Maxwell annihilating Leon Gata. But again, you cannot feel bad for Leon Gata. He asked for this match, and he got exactly what he wanted. The Angel of Death remains undefeated. And Leon Gata might have to be uh, scraped off the mat with a shovel.
Leon Gar is successfully escorted to the back after getting murked by Duo Maxwell, guys. And the show continues as coming up next, we've got some more tag team action. And I say again, if you enjoy tag team action, make sure you stick around because we've got plenty more tag team matches to come. All right, now it is the pure Michael Hawk and Samuel Valentine set to take on the team of Ace Reeves and Johnny Cloudcutter. Earlier this week on Shockwave at the Johnny Cloudcutter's win against Chris Diamond that Michael Hawk came out onto the stage. Of course, Ace Reeves was ringside watching that matchup. And Michael Hawk really digging into Ace Reeves saying, you were once a, a megastar here in CA at the very top of the mountain. And I watched personally as you were indoctrinated by John Butler turned into nothing more than a lap dog, when I know you have so much more potential than that. Michael Hawk offering his hand saying, Ace Reeves, let me walk you down the path of purity. Let me show you all that you truly can be. Former undisputable heavyweight champion apparently trying to bolster the ranks of the pure and has Ace Reeves in mind, but it doesn't seem like Ace Reeves was all that interested in accepting Michael Hawk's offer. If anything, I think it might have opened up Ace's eyes a little bit, make him realize exactly what he was a part of alongside John Lipnick and certainly not wanting to fall into that same routine if you were enjoying the pure. Forgive me for saying so, but I don't think Michael Hawk's intentions are very pure. I don't think he truly has the best in mind for Ace Reeves. Telling Ace Reeves to trust him, but I wouldn't trust Michael Hawk as far as I can throw him. We're finally starting to see the Ace Reeves of old. He's sort of peeking out, looking around the corner. Former Mr. Magnificent Six, former NGW World Heavyweight Champion, former Global Champion. We're starting to see that Ace Reeves again. Over these last couple weeks, he's been hanging out with Johnny Cloudcutter. I would hate to see that immediately snuffed out by Michael Hawk and the rest of the pure. Reeves become his own man once again or will he be once again lured down a dark path I would say Ace Reeves making his way out onto the stage and hold the phone look at this now that that is the Ace Reeves I know he's got the bomber jacket back and everything Hold up a minute. OG Ace Reeves in the building. You truly love to see it. That is the former Mr. Magnificent Six. NGW World Heavyweight Champion, two-time global champion. That's Ace Reeves right there. And Michael Hawk looking on. You can tell how active he is. He's not happy to see this. Ace Reeves has got the jacket back. Does he have his groove back? Seems like he's still a bit retracted though, perhaps still a bit hesitant. 
see by looking in his eyes. But I'd say hanging out with Johnny Cloudcutter has certainly done wonders for him. And of course, Johnny Cloudcutter has been nonstop since returning last month at the Ruler of the Ring event. Of course, a win there against Paragon J. Pierce. Earlier this week on Shockwave, knocking off Chris Diamond. Johnny Cloudcutter has been on a roll. And now looking to take Ace Reeves with him to the top. Of course, these guys go way, way, way back. Johnny Cloudcutter shared that same NGW locker room with Ace Reeves. He's telling Ace Reeves, don't fall for it, man. Don't become a lap dog for Michael Hawk like you were for John Lipnick. Of course, Johnny Cloudcutter also knows what it's like to be used by John Lipnick. Tag team action at Battle Scars 8. The pure Michael Hawk and Samuel Valentine taking on a revitalized Ace Reeves and Johnny Cloud. Look at that! I didn't even see the back of his tights. He's got the gravity manipulator uh, moniker back and everything. The boy is really showing up here tonight, but instantly blasted by Hawk with that forearm smash. And a hook to the jaw on top of that. Michael Hawk, jeez Louise. Trying to beat some sense into Ace Reeves here tonight. I mean, we've seen Michael Hawk countless times force individuals down the path of purity if they do not want to willingly walk it alongside him. This is a chiropractor and then a tag to Johnny Cloudcutter. All right, I'm a tie up. Throwing over the shoulders. Many see Johnny Cloudcutter as being next in line for a shot at the Undisputed with Heavyweight Championship. After his win in the main event of Ascendance 10 against Dante Tatum, but of course Dante Tatum returning earlier this week on Shockwave and saying not so fast. Of course, we'll see him a little bit later on tonight as he puts it in open sparring session, quote unquote. We'll see who answers that open sparring session. He has demanded that he received a number one contenders match on the next episode of Shockwave. Otherwise, he threatened general manager of Shockwave, Jackson Wright, that he's gonna have his hands full. Chain reaction, gonna make him pay. Very not fully connecting. Hawk able to make the hot tag to Samuel Valentine. There we go. Got all of it. The gravity hit with a hangman's neck breaker. Tag is made to Johnny Cloudcutter. Both Johnny Cloudcutter and Ace Reeves, former tag team champions. Oh, inverted Frankenstein of the lights just turning on very bright there for a moment. Was that just me? Did anyone else see that? Was God looking down on uh, Samuel Valentine's ass there for a brief second? High kick to the jaw. Sets up Valentine. Oh, for a boot off off the bottom rope. Oh, and off the second rope. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. And off the top rope? That was, I've never seen that before. That was awesome. And straight back up to the top rope. Samuel Valentine doing his best to crawl away. Cloudcutter stops him and tries to. Valentine moves out of the way just in the nick of time. Hold into a beast bomb? Yes, sir. Samuel Valentine. Superior power. Suffocate Johnny Cloudcutter here. Cloudcutter though. Gorgeous head scissors. Put Valentine on his derriere. Now backs him into the corner. Side of the ring, slow, cautious approach. Not fixing to make a tag just yet. Instead, a sunset flip power bomb. Aloha Valentine. Oh, a shot to the jaw. Great reversal by Samuel. Going for another beast bomb. But Johnny saying, what is enough? Thank you, good sir. 
Jones gains his punches to the top of the head, tries for an Enziguri, ducks it this Valentine, grabs him by the hair and slams him down out of the mat. Tag to Michael Hawk. Former undisputed heavyweight champion has not had the best luck since losing his title at Ascendance 10. Of course, he and Scott Tristan Troyal knocked out in the first round of the Ruler of the Ring tournament. Now it seems like he's not going to have very much luck recruiting Ace Reeves to the pure. Former NGW with heavyweight champion tries for a kick, gets caught, turned into a dragon screw. Misses that stomp. Power Nobo tie up. Hawk the Stronger going to overpower Ace Reeves. Will he overpower him spiritually, though? That's the question. A couple of elbows to the midsection. Now it's Michael Hawk getting taken for a walk here. Shuts that down real quick. Irish whip, not where Ace Reeves wants to be here in the corner of the pure. Big time right hand coming in. Ace Reeves keeping Michael Hawk at bay. Spinning back fist. Head kick misses the first one, but gets it the second time. Back to Cloudcutter. Love the teamwork of Ace Reeves and Johnny Cloudcutter so far. They're working like you might say a well oiled machine. Into the corner, Hawk is sent. Lower than usual, Johnny Cloudcutter here as he throws Hawk into the opposite corner. Shotgun drop kick! The back of Hawk's head smashing off that middle turnbuckle. Valentine gonna make the save though. Cloudcutter says, bitch. Drops down behind his Valentine. Chop block! Ace Reeves just vibing. He's not too sure what to do. I mean, we've seen how conflicted he has been emotionally over these last couple weeks, but looks like he just froze up there, and that's not good for Johnny Cloudcutter. He's gotta be able to rely on his tag team partner here. Former smash blocked by Hawk, turned to a DDT! God damn, Cloudcutter just sent into another dimension right there. So Michael Hawk follows it up with a back suplex. Whew. Cloudcutter's soul has left his body as we get a tag to Samuel Valentine. Loud cutter, elbow to the gut, gonna keep him back up. Dropkick using his own momentum against him. Look at that perfect positioning, says Johnny Cloudcutter right up to the top rope. Shooting star! Rats hooks the leg. One, two. Johnny Cloudcutter, but these fans love it what they're seeing there. Certainly behind Ace Reeves and Johnny Cloudcutter, but again, can Johnny Cloudcutter fully depend on Ace Reeves here tonight? Valentine escapes. Looks to send him over to Michael Hawk with Johnny Cloudcutter. And not so fast, forearm smash. Cloudcutter just not strong enough to maintain the upper hand against Samuel Valentine. Elbow to the jaw, quick leaving Cloudcutter a chance here. Tries to take his shot. Valentine staying on top of him. Like peanut butter on jelly. Cloud cutter desperately, man. Doing all he can to keep his head above the water, but things are not looking good. There we go. Corkscrew sent on. Michael Hawk shout yelling. Cloud cutter very nearly having this match won. Middle of the back, Cloudcutter just walking right by Michael Hawk. Goes back up to the top rope, and Valentine beginning to move, gets to his feet. Cloudcutter decides it's not the best time and runs right into a spy buster. Cloudcutter trying to make that hot tag. Ace Reeves ready for it, but Valentine looking to take him out perhaps with a test drive. Action rolls out of the way into a reverse DDT. There's the tag finally made to Ace Reeves. Valentine, he doesn't know where he is right now. <laughs> He's trying to make the hot tag. He's going in the wrong direction, though. Valentine. Just continuing to crawl. He's trying to make the tag to Johnny Clapper. <laughs> Ace Reeves finally done having a bit of bit of a laugh, forearm smash and the tag to Johnny Cloudcutter. Oh, Cloudcutter will tie up. Irish whip now into the corner. 
Kick to the jaw, gonna set Valentine up. He's gonna go for the trio of moonsaults again. Udo. Dos. Will we see this? Yes, we will. The trifecta pulled off to perfection by Johnny Clapham. There we go, Valentine finally crawling in the right direction. Hot tag made to Michael Hawk. Oh, it walks right into the spinning hill. One, two, no. Who would have thought that would be enough? But Michael Hawk barely keeping himself in the game. A Street's not playing around. Another kick to the head. On Dream Street right now is the Messiah of CME in the absence of Robert Cross. Up to the top rope. Can't be looking at that double move stomp. That is way too far off. Yeah, A Street's realizing that. I'm gonna go to the other corner. No mind. Readjusts himself. And the double move stomp gonna miss. He took too long. Oh! Censorship! Censorship locked in! Censorship locked in! Michael Hawk pouncing. And A Street's now. Will he surrender to Michael Hawk? No! Pushes him off. Remain strong as Ace Reeves. Hawk in the corner. Head scissors, whip. Puts Hawk on his ass. Slam face first on the top turn, but will Samuel Valentine just for getting consciousness and <laughs> looking like he has no idea where he is right now. Another whirly bird head scissors. And a kick to the back. That's the cherry on top. The chef's kiss. One more. Tag to Johnny Cloudcutter. Wrap things up. Hawk is certainly hurting after those nasty kicks to the head of Michael Hawk. Courtesy of Ace Reeves. To the top rope he goes. Michael Hawk is in the danger zone. Shooting star press on the money. One, two. But Samuel Valentine with the clutch save. 2.999. Valentine to the outside. Keeping him busy, but Hawks to his feet. Looking for the, the three single knee backbreakers. At ringside, Ace reaches some knees to the gut of Valentine as Johnny. Gonna go for that shotgun drop kick a second time. And Cloud Cutter from Rex Rope gonna hit the shooting star. Shotgun drop kick, a shooting star press, and then the coup de gras. Puts Michael Hawk away. A huge win for Ace Reeves and Johnny Cloudcutter here at Battle Scars 8. The Ace Reeves of old is back.
Coming up next here at Battle Scars 8, my friends, we've got some more championship action as Chris Diamond prepares to challenge John Reed for the Intercontinental Championship. It's already been a hell of a night thus far, and we still have so much more to look forward to. But the Golden General of Aurelius looking to bring some gold back to the group here tonight, the British Bowler. British Bowler? He is a pretty good bowler. I've seen Chris Diamond bowl, all right? We've gone out a couple of times, me and the boys, and Chris Diamond, he might be the best bowler in CMV. He's also a baller, though. And tonight, he's looking to ball hard. Yeah, he's looking to, he's looking to get a strike here at Battle Scars 8 and put some championship gold back around his waist. It's been too long, says Chris Diamond. Of course, the Intercontinental Championship, one of the very few titles he has yet to hold. In his illustrious CMV career. A resume that's a mile long, but that Intercontinental Championship has managed to elude Chris Diamond. That's gonna change here tonight. If Chris Diamond has his Chris Diamond, I'm sure, would much rather be challenging for the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship here tonight in our main event, but unable to win that triple threat match a few weeks ago. It was, of course, Jeremy Barmore, who was victorious and gets that opportunity a bit later on, challenging Pierre Thompson. But did manage to win that triple threat match a couple of weeks ago and get this opportunity against John Reed tonight. Chris Diamond saying, guys, a couple of days ago, I cut off the head of the snake at a sentence 10. I beat the piss out of George King inside a hell in a cell. Now it's time to get rid of the body. John Reed been on his own ever since a sentence 10. We don't know where George King has been licking his wounds, I'm sure. Can John Reed keep what remains of the kingdom intact or will it all come crumbling down here tonight at Battle Scars 8? John Reed has been very, very impressive as of late, even with the absence of George King. Recently winning a triple threat match on Shockwave against Ji Sung Min and Danger Cat. Also tapped out Duo Maxwell a couple weeks ago. Not in a match, but even still, that's an impressive feat. After a win against Jaden Briggs. Two absolute legends here. One on one for the Intercontinental Championship. The championship goal be brought back to Aurelius. Here tonight, of course, Chris Diamond's protege, Andre Rogers, a bit later on, gonna be locked inside of a steel cage against Gabriel Seto. Jackson Wright ordering Seto to finish Andre Rogers off once and for all, and if he does, let's promise Seto anything he wants. As always, Chris Diamond, no doubt in his mind, he's going to be leaving here tonight with the Intercontinental Championship and then going to go out for a pint and a bit of bowling with the boys to celebrate. Stoic is John Reed. No fear. Someone's going to leave tonight with that Intercontinental Championship. Will it be Chris Diamond? Or will John Reed be able to retain? Diamond, Reed, one on one. Murphy rings that bell, and of course, Backer in this matchup going to be the rest of Aurelius at ringside. Jackson, James, and Jet Suzuki in the corner of their general. Henri going to have to stay focused. Not going to fall for any of the shenanigans they might try to employ here. Needs to 
extended arm. Chris Diamond straight out the gate trying to wear down John Reed's limbs. Take out the arms. And of course, Pachi with that right to the eye. Back to Chris Diamond at Ascendance 10. Winning that Hell in a Cell match against George King. George King has not been seen or heard from since. Will he take out what remains of the kingdom here tonight? Oh, damn. Come on now, Diamond. It's knocked over by water, bro. That's Fiji, man. That costs money. Ron Reed not caring where the fight is taken. Oh, and throw him gut first into the announce table. Just lucky my best friend, the Ted, is now here. Otherwise, he would give you what for for trying to come over here and mess with me. Look at John Reed telling Diamond, where you going, boy? Get back into the ring. Tries to catch him off guard. Going to miss. Grabs the of the arm. Grabbed by the hair now. Put up against the ropes. Tries for a right hook. Forearm smash. Cheeky jab. Another forearm smash. Perhaps that's why Chris Diamond is so pale, man. He's always inside bowling. Really needs to get a tan. Take a lesson from John Reed. John Reed's got a nice tan. Diamond looks great physically. Maybe the best shape you've ever seen him in. He's jacked. But... Man, I can't even look out of my eyes hurt. The fucking glare bouncing off of him. Hammerlock set up by the fallen angel. Now gonna have a bit of fun as he bends back the wrist of the British baller. And these fans bloodthirsty as they chant for John Reed to break Diamond's fingers here. Again, he's got the wrist. Diamond at the mercy of John Reed here right now, but you can be damn sure there isn't going to be any mercy. You can see Jet Suzuki doesn't even want to look, man. Knowing that they can't help out there. General here, unless they cause a disqualification, and Diamond can only win the title by pinfall or submission. John Reed, however, does have that champion's advantage. He can leave still Intercontinental Champion. Oh, going for the Collar City Clutch. Escapes with a shot to the quad and a spinning reverse DDT. Almost like an inverted Mishinoku driver. Grabs that kick, turns it into a dragon screw. Diamond straight back up to his feet. Forearm smash, but a very slow pace here between these two. They're both methodical competitors. The long road home. Get Suzuki popping hard for that. Sets up Diamond. He's going to do a strike. Super kick. Doesn't even go for the pin. Looking to take it home. Break your neck. John Reed, is he offering a handshake? The kingdom crumbles and Aurelius standing on the ashes here at Battle Scars 8. The kingdom is no more. Diamond conquers and is the new intercontinental champion.
Well, things just got started in a good way for Aurelius here at Battle Scars 8. Chris Diamond becoming the new Intercontinental Champion by defeating John Reed. But will the good times continue? As coming up next, it is a steel cage match. The right hand, Gabriel Seto prepares to take on the golden boy, Andre Rogers. And of course, our general manager of Shockwave Jackson Wright has tasked Seto with putting Andre Rogers out of commission for good here tonight. And if he does, Jackson Wright has promised Seto anything he wants and then some. We saw Seto getting a bit, a bit frustrated during the media scrum after the ruler of the ring event saying, you know, Wright promised me a lot of things, but as of yet, he hasn't delivered, but Wright firing back saying, you haven't delivered. Look, I ditched Andrew Briggs for you. I chose you. You haven't really been doing a very good job for me thus far. So a bit of an ultimatum here. Seto wins, or perhaps Jackson Wright finds himself a new right-hand man. Of course, that steel cage gonna trap these two inside. No interferences from Jackson Wright's goons. No interferences from Aurelius. Seto and Rogers one on one. The better man wins. Of course, this all started thanks to the ego of Andre Rogers getting the better of him, as Diamond put it. He's young, he's cocky, he's arrogant. And he let his emotions get the better of him a few months ago when he attacked Jackson right while he was ringside during a matchup actually between these two. It was Gabriel Seto challenging Andre Rogers for the Intercontinental Championship. Rogers got a bit frustrated saying, you know, I feel like Seto hasn't earned this opportunity. He's just getting it because he's your boy. And so attacked the general manager while he was at ringside, busted him open and everything. And ever since then, Wright has had it out for Andre Rogers. And to be fair, Rogers hasn't done himself any favors, man. Has not been able to keep his mouth shut. Just digging the grave deeper and deeper and deeper. Will he reach the bottom here tonight or can he claw his way out of it is the question. This is a steel cage match, but the only way you can win is by pinfall or submission. There is no escaping this cage. And again, it's to keep Jackson Wright's goons out, also to keep Aurelius out. This is one-on-one, -on -one, straight up. Seto wins, he gets anything he wants. Andre Rogers wins, well, and Seto might find himself falling out of favor with our general manager of Shockwave. Andre Raj with a hot start. Taking Seto down to the corner. Big boot! Right to the temple. And directly into some punishment. Bending back on the wrist. Andre Rogers has had to go through a whole hell of a lot of these last couple of months, man. Handicap matches. Never got a proper rematch for the Intercontinental Championship. Been put up against the likes of Gurry. It's just been non-stop, but Andre Rogers still standing. Credit where it's due. His mouth might get him in a lot of trouble, but he's standing his ground. He ain't backing down. And Chris Diamond and the rest of Aurelius, they're standing right alongside him. So to come here tonight, guys, we've got that quote unquote open sparring session as Dante Tatum returns to action. Who will answer his open challenge? Of course, the Women's World Championship gonna be on the line as Kate Strongheart will defend against Maggie Shaw. The Unified World Tag Team Championship also gonna be defended by Chain Reaction. Perry Heenan and Ji Sung Min defending against the team of El Lucha Loco. And Alvarez, a couple of loco amigos. In our main event, gonna see the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship decided. Jeremy Barmore challenging Pierre Thompson. First time encounter. It's gonna be a hell of a match. Meat slapping meat. Stand tall as undisputed World Heavyweight Champion. When Battle Scars 8 goes off the air, springboard clothesline attempted by Seto. 
but what it is Rogers as he now puts the MVP of CMV back in the corner. Dragon screw right to that bad knee. And Andre Rogers knows Seto very well at this point. That's an injury Seto suffered during his time as a professional baseball player. Ended his baseball career. This is that springboard moonsault creates an opening for Seto. Big time slap right across the face. Follows his chumps to the chest. Set up and go for that ball and elbow drop out. Jaw. Butterfly suplex sends Seto flying into the corner. First pinfall attempt. Andre Rogers looking to get out of this steel cage alive, but only gets a two count. Stomps Seto while he's down. Genetic freak. Pops off with a snap vertical suplex. Some call him the perfect wrestler. Great reversal by Rogers. 24 year old piece of gold with a back suplex. And immediately, as soon as he has Seto down, back to work. Picking Seto apart and taking his time doing so. Side of the steel cage. Look how Rogers doesn't miss a beat though. Right back on top of Seto. Side headlock headstand. Those that Seto's hurting right now. He ain't 100% with it. Here we go. Seto never fully out of a fight though. Springboard cross body. Right up to the top rope. Gonna turn back around and hit time for the shooting star. Press with Andre Rogers, like I said, knows him too well. Waiting for Seto to get to his feet. Kick to the head. Puts him down. And once again, the bro mission is locked in. Bro mission locked in. No escape this time for Seto. He's got a tap. And Andre Rogers against the odds. Victorious here at Battle Scars 
say. And if you're watching right now, as Jackson Wright, what's gotta be going through your head, man? No matter what you throw at this kid, Andre Rogers continues to again and again defy the odds. And if you're Gabriel Seto, what does this mean for your position on Shockwave? Has the right hand man shown his hand here at Battle Stars 8? Has the luck run out for Gabriel Seto? Die Verbrennung der amerikanischen Chemie.
people keep asking if I'm back. And I haven't really had an answer. Now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Well, my friends, it is indeed time for the self described. Open sparring session here at Battle Scars 8. The catalyst is back and has issued an open challenge here at Battle Scars 8. He says it isn't a match, but it's just a chance for him to prove to Jackson, to everyone in the Shockwave Block Room, and to the CMB Universe that he is 100%. There is not a scratch on him. He is the picture of health, you might say. And wants to ensure that there is no denying that. Putting on a show here at Battle Scars 8, no matter who decides to walk down that ramp and share the ring with him. Along with that, Dante Tatum has demanded that once Jackson Wright sees, he is 100% ready to go that on the next episode of Shockwave he give him a rightful number one contenders match otherwise there's going to be held to pay Dante Tatum is very serious threats that he would make Jackson Wright's life a living hell as gentleman manager of Shockwave and he does not comply he does not give Dante Tatum what he feels as though he deserves and that's a number one contenders match say this much, Dante Tatum looks good considering the last time we saw him he was laying staring up the lights on hardwood at the main event of a sentence 10. Got his skull cracked more than a couple of times. It's that bell ring, we'll find out for sure. Here we go, it is indeed time, my friends. Who's going to answer the open challenge? Who the, who the hell is this? Ashera? What the, who the hell is this? Ashera? I It's, I don't know if it's just my vintage dashing memory or if this is, I feel like I, rec I feel like I know the name. I recognize this guy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I do. NGW, he was a part of Corrosion. Tashera in Nucleo, AKA Subject Zero Corrosion. So this is, this is a Tilco Val guy. And these two actually have quite a bit of history with one another. Corrosion and Dante Tatum had quite a lot of beef many years ago in NGW. It was actually at, at a homebound, if I remember correctly, that Corrosion faced the team of Jaquan Shea and Dante Tatum. That was years and years and years ago. We haven't seen Tashera in a very, very long time. It appears as though he is back. I guess the, the, the real question is, is Tailco Val pulling his strings or is Tashera back on his own here? We've seen Val guys poking and prodding Dante Tatum and Chain Reaction over the last few months. Remember what she did back at Homecoming? She uh, filled in for Team Cloudcutter at the very last second after Reese Matthews was incapacitated. Could she be playing around 
once again. We haven't seen Jill Koval since Ascendance 10. She's moved back behind the scenes. Is she trying to send a message to Nightmare? I don't, I don't know. I barely recognized him. Dante Tatum trying to focus up nonetheless. I'm not even sure if Dante Tatum is aware of who he's in the ring with. This is a man he fought many, many times at NGW, but Dante Tatum didn't seem very shocked as he was coming down the ramp. Didn't seem like he was amazed to, to see Tashera, so I have to imagine I barely recognize him. I, Dante Tatum probably doesn't even know who this guy is. But Tashera going after the catalyst as of course Ken Donahue watches on from ringside. This is an open sparring session. Not a not an actual match. Dante Tatum has made that very clear. Exhibition, if you will. Oh, wait a minute. Sarasi Driver! I have to imagine Tailco Val is behind this somehow. The fact that Tashir, who we haven't seen in years, just randomly returns here at Battle Scars 8, answering this open challenge. After it's already been established that Tailco Val has an interest in chain reaction. I could be wrong though, anything's possible. Let's get, ooh, lumbar check from Tashera. Where's Subject Zero though? That's, that's what I wanna know, is he back as well? Oh, hang on, Fisherman's Driver! Wait a minute, one, two, oh, what?
Well, as much as I would like to stay here behind the desk, guys, and ponder more what we just witnessed, that whole situation, that's going to have to wait because it is time for the match you all have been waiting for, that you all bought your tickets for. You came to see this match. Forget about King of the Ring. Forget about the main event. It's time for my best friend. The Ted guy to put Machine Gun Kelly post Malone out of mission once and for all. If you don't mind.
Oh, man. Check, check, one, two, check, one, two. Can you hear me? Whew. Oh, man. Back behind the desk. A little bit sweaty, but victorious. Just like I told you, me and my best friend, the Ted, would be. We punked out those jabronis. Now leave and never come back, you bunch of bitches. The Ted is literally amazing. You're all blessed to have seen that man just carry himself and myself to one of the biggest wins in CMB history. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh. Whew, a sip of water after that. I beat that ass. Fuck you, Post. But now the show must go on, as they say. We still have plenty of action to look forward to here at Battle Scars 8. And coming up next, of course, as you can see, Maggie Shaw making her way into the ring as the Women's World Championship is about to be on the line. The second generation superstar getting her opportunity to prove that what happened a few weeks ago was no fluke. Of course, Maggie Shaw defeating Kate Strongheart in a non-title match to earn this championship opportunity here tonight, but Kate Strongheart has been clear that that was nothing more than luck, a fluke on Maggie Shaw's part. And Kate Strongheart's gonna prove it here tonight. Prove that Maggie Shaw is not on her level. She might be a second generation superstar, but Kate Strongheart's the last graduate of the Heart Dungeon. She carries that heart name with her. And of course, we all saw what happened a couple nights ago on Octane. In that tag team match, Kate Strongheart made Maggie Shaw tap, utilizing the sharpshooter if it happens here tonight. Kate Strongheart will leave still women's world champion. And of course, we know at least one person that's gonna be watching this matchup very closely, and that's Kate Strongheart's tag team partner, Ashley Rain, guys. The queen of the ring will be challenging the winner of this matchup for the women's world championship. Will she have to challenge her own friend, her own tag team partner, something Rain is dreading? Or will Maggie Shaw see that lightning strikes twice? Talked about it earlier this week, man. Maggie Shaw really, for the first few months of this new season, been coasting, not been very, uh, very much at the forefront of the women's division. Picking up some wins, but some losses also here and there. But that one opportunity, man, she had against Kate Strongheart a few weeks ago, she made the most of it. Defeated Kate Strongheart clean as a whistle. But the championship wasn't on the line that night. It is here at Battle Scars 8. Can Maggie Shaw do it again? And will Kate Strongheart put her in her place? And of course, still to come tonight, guys, we're going to crown the king of the ring one way or the other. We must have a king. By the end of the night, no disqualifications when Jay Young and Hunter Quinn go one-on-one. -on -one. The Unified World Tag Team Championship gonna be on the line as Chain Reaction defends against the Lucha Loco and Alvarez. And of course, in our main event, CMB's crown jewel is on the line when Jeremy Barmore and Pierre Thompson be one-on-one. -on -one. First time ever, that is gonna be a hell of a match. Can Pierre Thompson lift the curse? Can he finally successfully defend the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship? Will Jeremy Barmore accomplish what many have said he will accomplish? First step foot here in CMB, and that's becoming world champion. Maggie Shaw dropping down into a colossal clutch, having the submission specialist in trouble early on here, but escapes rather quickly into an inverted suplex. My ribs a little bit sore, but man, I'll tell you what, it tastes great. Victory, that is. I know a lot of you don't know what that tastes like. I certainly do. Cross arm bar applied here by Kate Strongheart, middle of the ring, trying to have Maggie Shaw done for. Only a couple of minutes into this matchup, but 
the second generation superstar. She's got her family, her, her father, the legendary Billy Shaw, watching on. She's not going to disappoint like that. Maggie Shaw ready to bring her A game. Ooh, what a right hook. And I think Kate Strongheart definitely knows she doesn't want to stand and bang with Maggie Shaw. Double wrist clutch, Northern Lights, suplex by the champion. Coming, the women's world champion at Ascendance 10, winning that fatal full way match. Ashley Rain, also a part of that matchup. Going to be awaiting the victor here. We'll be challenging them for the women's world championship. She hasn't said it, but I very much think Ashley Rain would prefer Maggie Shaw win here tonight. <laughs> Ashley Rain does not want to face Kate Strongheart for the Women's World Championship. Irish whip into the corner. Strongheart grabbing Maggie by the hair. Slams her face first off the top turnbuckle. And a big time kick to the jaw. Now gonna tie her up in the rope. Strongheart drop kick to the chest. In a fall attempt. First one of the matchup to retain the Women's World Championship. It's nearly enough. Very, very nearly enough there. Hopping on the shoulder of Maggie Shaw. Strongheart again goes for the hair. Knife edge chop blocked by Maggie Shaw. Right hook connects, kick to the midsection. Bit of tip for tail. Oh, and there's a drop kick to the knee, guys. And we wondered whether or not that left knee of Maggie Shaw. Wait a minute, CTE connects! The CTE connects! It's Strongheart isn't wasting any time. A couple of nights ago on Octane, Maggie Shaw was forced to tap out. Sharp shooter locked in again. Middle of the ring. Will Shaw tap a second time or can she hang in there? Can she dig down deep? Okay, Strongheart letting go, but is the damage done after the CTE as well? One, two. I said Maggie Shaw is bringing her A game and then some to this matchup here tonight. She ain't gonna go down that easy. But she is certainly in a bad, bad way right now as Strongheart stays on the attack, puts her up on the top rope. Holy shit, what is she doing? Falcon! <laughs> Shaw somehow still in the fight though. Grabbing Kate by the ponytail, punch between the eyes. Hooks the leg, can it be? Will lightning strike twice? One, two, no. Maggie Shaw composing herself, taking a deep breath. She's got strong heart hurt. Shaw gonna set her up with a right hook. Irish whip into the corner. Oh, but a quick elbow from Kate Strongheart saves her. Double axe handle avoided. Into the power double tie-up and a kick to the midsection. Power double tie-up again. Backslide driver. Stomp on the hand. Grabs her by the hair. Collar City clutch. Locked in. Maggie Shaw gonna make Kate Strongheart tap out here tonight. Collar City clutch is locked in, but Strongheart knows how to get out of it. Not a better submission specialist in the women's division today. Knife edge chop, and again, one more time. Irish whip to the corner. Woo! Doesn't stop, man. Light up that chance on the 4th of July. Into the pin, one, two. Unable to retain the women's world championship, though. Strong heart with the upper hand. Looking to keep it that way. With the Owen Hart S pile driver counters.
what a match. Look, Kate Strongheart can't even stand. Maggie Shaw gave her a fight and then some. But the Queen of Hearts, still the women's world champion, showing the wounds of war, but there she stands indeed. Women's world championship in her hand. What a match, man. You know what that means? And I'm sure Ashley Rain has realized it as well, watching from backstage. That means Ashley Rain is going to have to face her own tag team partner, Kate Strongheart, at Women's World Championship. What an incredible show it has been so far here at Battle Scars 8, lads and gents, but it still isn't over. We are going into our tertiary main event, and it is time to crown the king of the ring one way or the other. Of course, back at the ruler of the ring event in Manchester, England a few weeks ago, it was Jay Young versus Hunter Quinn to crown the king of the ring, but that match was cursed from the get-go. First, the match, there was like some technical difficulties. The referee called for the bell because apparently Jay Young made Hunter Quinn tap, but Hunter Quinn said he didn't tap. It was a whole thing, so the ref decided to restart the match. And then, Liam Sharp ran down into the ring and attacked Hunter Quinn, helped Jay Young, lay out Hunter Quinn so the ref said that's it that's enough and threw the match out double DQ and afterwards during the media scrum Hunter Quinn obviously livid getting in Jackson Wright's face saying what are you gonna do you know what's gonna happen and so Jackson Wright along with Madison Wright deciding to make this match no disqualifications doesn't matter what happens the whole roster could run in there will be a winner we will crown a king of the ring here tonight at Battle Scars 8. The TV nightmare, Jay Young in the ring, ready to go as the Hellhound, the open weight champion, of course, successfully defending that title just earlier this week on Shockwave against Gabriel Seto. Looking to take his place upon the throne by the end of tonight. Will it be King Kraken or will it be King Hellhound? The winner not only getting that crown, getting that honor bestowed upon them, but of course earning a shot at whichever world championship they want. Of course, Jay Young is an octane superstar. Hunter Quinn, of course, 
a part of the Shockwave roster. The Global Championship and the Undisputable Heavyweight Championship awaiting one of these men. Who will it be? No more time left to ponder. Time to get down to the action. Jay Young, Hunter Quinn to crown the king of the ring. And there are no, no disqualifications, no count outs. The only way to win is by pinfall or submission in the ring. Hot start by Hunter Quinn with that Uranagi right into the full mountain. Some right hands finishing with a slap across the face. Choke Hunter Quinn already utilizing the fact that there are no disqualifications. Referee Murphy can't do anything about this. That is a 100% legal choke and a quick snack. Kinda. Bite off a finger, <laughs> gnawing away at Jay Young's hand. I don't think Hunter Quinn wants to break a finger, man. I think he wants to eat a finger here. Into the midsection. Jay Young. Ooh, Pele gets the back of the head. Jay Young feels as though this is all a lot of bullshit. He won the match at the Ruler of the Ring event. The bell rang. Of course, the referee ended up restarting it. Great many in the senior universe actually agree with Jay Young. They feel as though he already is king. And this is just a formality, but of course, Hunter Quinn thinks otherwise. Nice counter of the powerbomb into one of his own. No count outs as Hunter Quinn goes to work on the left knee of Jay Young here at ringside. Arnobo tie up, thrown into the ring. Hunter Quinn taking his time though. Gonna continue to focus on the knees. Seems like Hunter Quinn has a game plan here. Goes for a pin, will it be over? Just like that, will it be King Hunter Quinn? No. Quick kick to the side of the head. Never take your eyes off of Jay Young, man. That's rule number one when you get in the ring against the Kraken. Former NGW Tag Team Champion, Unified World Tag Team Champion, and International Champion just busted Quinn open off those punches, guys. Not good news for the Hellhound. Tries for a hammer fish. Jay Young catches him and sends him into the corner. Goes for a big time kick, but Quinn is quicker with a couple of kicks of his own. Woo! Swinging side slam. Quinn is already bleeding badly, too. That's a nasty cut. Looks like he's got two cuts. One in the middle of his forehead and one by his right eyebrow. Jay Young's got that lethal striking, man. Quinn, though. Closed fist across the chest. One after the other. Beating Jay Young's chest like a drum. Oh, and then a punch to the ear. That's going to have Young's head ringing. Up like he ain't nothing. Power by Hunter Quinn. Going for that release Tiger Bomb. Jay Young sees it coming ahead, but uh oh, goes to the corner. Jay Young looking for that basement drop kick of his. Blasts him right upside the head, but apparently not going to stop there. Wait a minute. No disqualifications. Oh, man, brought into play by the TV Nightmare. Hunter Quinn's back to his feet, though. Gonna try to avoid that ladder. Oh, but he can't. Cold steel right in his face as Jay Young now dragging him into position. Seems like he can't find a, a, a proper position, though. Wait a minute, Jay Young. Go for the regal stretch. Regal stretch locked in! Regal stretch locked in! Hunter Quinn in huge trouble! The Regal stretch applied! Jay Young's got him caught, but Hunter Quinn is not tapping! Able to escape! Hunter Quinn's got himself a chance here. Can he make the most of it? Throws Young out of the corner. That ladder just standing there now. In the middle of the ring as Quinn takes another bite out of Young's finger. Oh, he's very hungry, man. He has to replenish some energy. He's lost a lot of blood. And 
Now it's Hunter Quinn gonna try his hand at winning this match via submission. Vintage Quinn here with the modified cross face. He has won matches with this submission before. Jay Young caught in a bad way. Of course, trained by the technical prodigy Hall of Famer Dave Turner. Young able to escape. Throws him down to the outside. This is not false count anywhere. It's gotta be by pin or submission in the ring. But Young looking for another toy to play with here. Now he's got the chair. The age-old equalizer right over the head of Hunter Quinn. Tries for another shot. Quinn just took that shot to the head like a pimp. Right back up to his feet, now thrown. Down on the cold, unforgiving floor. Quick kick. And a knee. And retaliation. Power number tie up. Slam off the apron. What a close line! Sheesh! Quinn just turns your boy inside out with that close line. He gets back into the ring. Hunter Quinn beating his chest, saying, I can go all night, baby. I might not look great, but I am far from finished. Young back into the ring, Quinn gonna cut him off. Beautiful back suplex. Stop on the knee, Quinn's been targeting that knee throughout the match, and here we go! Half, oh wait, what is going for half off the crowd? Now he's got a knee bar! Knee bar locked in! Jay Young reaching for the ropes. There are no rope breaks, though. Trying his teeth and escape with some well-placed punches to the jaw. Oh, but you can see the damage is done to that left knee, man. Young's having some trouble even standing at this point. Once again, this fight taken to the outside. Now Young just staring down at Hunter Quinn from the ring. Oh, here we go again. What's Young gonna bring out this time? He's got a metal baseball bat. Quinn not gonna get a chance to use it though. Into the apron. Drop to the extended arm. Elbow to the head. You can see that both men have slowed down at this point. This has been a hard hitting matchup, and especially Hunter Quinn, man. He's gotten a beating. Still eating from those cuts. Oh, there's another clothesline to write home about. Knife yeah. shot goes for a jab. Quickly caught by Jay Young, though, and thrown down. Young gonna go for that steel chair again. Hunter Quinn says, no thank you. Gonna escape into the ring in a hot pursuit though. Oh, the in and out game. Hunter Quinn out maneuvering Jay Young here. Goes for a chair shot again and connects to the head. Blood all over that chair now. Oh my God, and Young's not stopping. Just beating Quinn while he's down. Able to grab that kick though. One tough son of a bitch is Hunter Quinn. Now Quinn's got the ladder. Young into the ring, Quinn's waiting for him. Jay Young able to knock the ladder out of his hands. Hook to the jaw. Power double tie up. Spanish fly! Spanish fly. What else? A sledgehammer now. Right down onto the head. And again, a third time to win. Close line! Jay Young tries to lose says, let me help you, brother. Hook to the jaw, trying to set up the psycho driller, perhaps. Up against the ropes, not where Queen wants to be. Forearm smash to the middle of the back, and again, Timber. Quinn falls, Jay Young sees his opening, he's gonna take it! Regal stretch attempt, but Quinn keeps him at bay. Another snack, keeps Quinn going. The full mount, Quinn wants to make Young bleed. Big slap across the face. No respect to be had between these two as we seek to crown the rightful king of the ring here tonight. Kraken brought to his feet, hook to the jaw, psycho! Driller! Finally connects, hooks the leg. One, two, three, and Hunter Quinn is your king of the all it takes is one was trying to hit that psycho driller all match long but young kept avoiding it but quinn finally
connects and it's lights out. Game over. Thanks for coming. Bloodied, bruised, but still standing. All hail King Quinn. The Hellhound. Gonna take his rightful place upon the throne. And now a choice for Hunter Quinn. Will it be the Global Championship or the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship? Which prize shall he claim? A king needs a crown jewel after all. Main event time here at Battle Scars 8, lads and gents. And the Unified World Tag Team Championship going to be on the line as Los Amigos Locos. Alvarez and El Lucha Loco look to make it a bad night from top to bottom for chain reaction. Of course, earlier tonight we saw Dante Tatum make his grand return to the ring, issuing an open challenge for that quote-unquote sparring session and, well, got quickly put to sleep by the returning Tashera. Can Chain Reaction at least end the night on a high note? Well, Ji Sung Min and Perry Heaton are confident they will do so. Golden Tiger, of course, the replacement in chain reaction of Alvarez, who was rather unceremoniously kicked out of the group following a sentence 10. Perry Heenan saying it's because of his ridiculous attires and out there attitude. Heenan saying we are a legit group of wrestlers. Pure wrestling is what we're about. We're not about costumes, dressing up, you know, going out to the ring, doing all that, that flippy shit, this, that, and the other thing. I personally think that Perry Heenan was projecting 
considering Chain Reaction just got sweeped overall in Ascendance 10, but one way or the other, Alvarez was kicked out and replaced by Ji Sung Min. But Alvarez saying that's all well and fine, but those tag team titles, those are mine. Both times for Chain Reaction, I won the Unified World Tag Team titles. If not for me, you wouldn't even have those belts. But Perry Heenan saying, no, these belts belong to Chain Reaction, and you are no longer a member of Chain Reaction. And so here we are, Alvarez has found himself an unlikely ally, a new tag team partner to try and take those titles from Chain Reaction here tonight. Perry Hinnon saying he ain't about that carny bullshit. Well, he better be about it tonight. If I were Heenan, I would not be looking to underestimate El Lucha Loco and Alvarez. Loco especially. He's very easy to look at and think, oh, you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But Loco has surprised us many, many, many times since he debuted here in CMB with some shockingly, you know, your big upset wins. Will we see another one, the biggest yet? Here tonight as Alvarez gets things started against his replacement. Of course, Alvarez defeating Ji Sung Min one-on-one -on -one back at the Ruler of the Ring event. Followed that up with a win against Perry Heenan on Shockwave. Alvarez has been rolling. Min! Gonna bring a stop. Halt that momentum here tonight. Put Chain Reaction back on top. Throwing shoulder first into the steel steps. Of course, still to come, guys, up next in our main event. It's for the undisputable heavyweight championship. Jeremy Barmore challenges Pierre Thompson. Oh, lifts him up. The cheek of Alvarez. Ming going to respond with a vertical suplex. And Alvarez just gets right back up. Thrown down again, but the magician just unwilling to stay down. Tag is made to Perry Heenan. Shot one more time, a third, and a knee to the shoulder. Around Heenan, try to use his size here to bully Alvarez. That ain't gonna happen though. The scum of the earth able to escape. Takes a shot at the back of Heenan's knee. Tag now to El Lucha Loco, thrown down. With that belly to belly suplex, guys. This is, this is. A, about more than just the Unified World Tag Team Championship for El Lucho Loco here. We know for months he's been trying to get a contract here in CMB with either Shockwave or Octane, but has yet not been able to procure said contract. Oh, both Jackson Wright, Madison Wright, neither wants to take the chance to sign him, but if they win the Unified World Tag Team titles here tonight, you can bet your ass he'll be getting a contract immediately. El Lucho Loco. As Perry Heenan trapped here in a hamstring puller, saved by Min. Heenan able to now throw him back into the ring. And Heenan not listening to these fans who are firmly behind. Holy shit! The team of Los Amigos Loco, you don't turn your back on El Lucha Loco. And that is why. off the floor, knee drop to the eye. Not feeling too great right now is the pretty boy Pitbull. Six. Gonna use his size to throw around Loco. Torture rack neck breaker at ringside up to a count of seven guys. Of course, chain reaction, they have that champion's advantage. This ends via count out disqualifications. Ji Sung Min and Perry Heenan leave still the Unified World Tag Team Champions, but back into the ring. Heenan at least gonna save himself. No. And now taunting Loco saying, come on then, if you think you can hang. SOS sent out by Loco. Tag made to Alvarez. Sees Heenan staring up the lights, gonna 
take this opportunity to go for the pin and almost had the match won. If Loco went for the pin right away, we might have new unified world tag team champions. Mistake on Loco's part. Discus punch busts Heenan open. Try to make that tag, but Alvarez stops him. Gonna target that open cut now. Shockwave, Keenan does not want to get caught in the clutch. Could mean the end of the line. For a chain reaction, things have not been going their way these last few months. If they lose the Unified World Tag Team titles here at Battle Scars 8, I don't know. It might be time to seriously step back and reevaluate their strategy. Nice neck breaker by Min. Heenan back in, Alvarez looking to make the tag to Loco. Looks like he's a bit out of it though. There we, wait, nope, there we go. Heenan allows it. Seems like Heenan wants a piece of El Lucho. Tries for a throat thrust, hook to the jaw instead, spins Heenan around. Standing sea fire. Plays out the wrestling encyclopedia, hooks the leg. Oh, besides nothing. Oh, okay. Loco having a bit of trouble here. One, only a one count. as Loco fixing to go up to the top rope but decided not to. Cross-legged Fisherman's Buster, vintage. Tag to Min. Loco waiting patiently for the Golden Tiger. Come and take his shot and he indeed does with a kick to the midsection followed up by a hammerlock suplex. Unified World Tag Team Champion. Join a very elite list. Not many have done so. Oh, forearm smash and a dropkick. Loco not doing too hot right now. Tags Heenan back in. Rabbit Loco by the mask. Kick to the midsection. Sets him up for the impaler. Shutting down the carny shit. Hooks the leg to retain. One, two. Scars 8, but I know what very well might. And so does Perry Heenan gonna point that finger into the air, going for the graduation pile driver, but Loco able to reverse the DDT. Wise move here by Loco, makes the tag to Alvarez. The magician gonna make the unified world tag team titles appear here tonight at Battle Scars 8, appear in his hands. Tag to Loco, tag to Min. Right after him, Loco able to catch him with a sit out face buster. Min tries to get right back up. Loco distracted by Heenan for a second. Turns back to Min. Leg drop, Bulldog. In right back up, working out of instincts here. But caught with a wheelbarrow. DDT! Tag again to Alvarez. Min just won't stay down though. He's really in this fight. Alvarez gonna send him into the corner. Kicks to the midsection, finishing with that shot to the jaw. Now looking for a stop. Min able to catch the boot though, trips him up. Gonna crack the front tooth with that landing. We've seen this from Min before. Alvarez has felt it before. Rain Buster. Not going for the though, it's dead. Kick keeping Alvarez down as the tag is made to Perry Heenan. Oh, wow! What a reversal! That was like a Samoan drop turned into a sort of slam type maneuver thing. I don't even think he didn't do what he was hitting there. That was just like instinct. Just fucking threw Alvarez up into the air. And now throws him out of the corner. Tag to Min, man. Great teamwork by chain reaction throughout this match. Tagging in and out frequently, and now look at Min stalking Alvarez. Thinking about his next move, but hopefully he doesn't think too long. Going after that knee, trying to tear it off. Double leg drop, working those knees. Tag to Perry Heenan. They 
Got Alvarez isolated right now, and they are slowly but surely wearing him down. Look at this. This coordinated attack on the left knee of Alvarez by both men and Heenan. Tag to men. Loving what I'm seeing right now. This is expert tag work. And Min has had enough. Alvarez hobbling on one knee right now. And the Golden Tiger looking for the Golden Tiger suplex. One. But that bridge is brought crashing down by El Lucha Loco. Makes the save. This match going to continue for now. But Alvarez is not in good shape right now. Loco thrown to the outside. Able to step back from that right hook. Throws out a torture rack bomb. Alvarez thinking quickly. Half Nelson suplex, vintage magician. Quickly hooks the leg, can he steal it here? One, no, easy breakup for Perry Heenan. Out goes after Loco. Gonna make sure he doesn't continue to interfere. Alvarez focuses on men as Perry Heenan and Lucha Loco continue to fight at ringside. This could be Alvarez's chance and he knows it. Vintage Alvarez rolling thunder. It is hurt. Alvarez smells blood in the water. Chopped to the face. <laughs> Trying to take him for a walk, perhaps put him in the corner. Then able to get out of it though with an elbow to the gut. <laughs> Beautiful scoop slam. Very fluid. Cranking that neck. Alvarez. Whatever fight he might have left, man. Getting to his feet. Kick to the back of the knee. What is this? Oh! <laughs> into a German suplex. Smart move, making the tag to El Lucha Loco. Alvarez hanging on by a threat right now, but Loco still has that fight left in him. Top rope, what is Loco looking for here? Gonna fly through the air. Cross body sidestep by Min. Loco tries to get back up. Min keeping him down with those clobbering blows. Tearing at the arm now. Look at him rip it off clean, bring it home, put it in his trophy case. Walking Loco into the corner. Tag made to Perry Heenan. Gonna slam Loco face first into the big, big boot of the pit bull. Woo, close line from Loco. Gives himself an opening, makes that tag to Alvarez. Knife edge chop. That went right across the face, though. Ooh! Side slam. Just about putting Alvarez through the canvas. The tag to Min. Going for the chop block, trying to continue to target that knee, but Alvarez getting his own knee up to block it. Wait a minute! A brain buster! <laughs> Giving Min a taste of his own medicine. And a headbutt gonna bust Min open. Old Min and Perry Heenan bleeding now. Alvarez still ain't finished. Another rolling thunder. And in perfect position to make that tag to El Lucho Loco. Loco lining up his shot to the top rope. He goes. Gonna try for that crossbody again. No! What a reversal! Catching El Lucho Loco midair and dropping him with a sit out power bomb. Hook to the jaw, the Golden Tiger Suplex coming in again. But Loco has eyes in the back of his head, going for some kicks, countered by Min. Another brain buster from the Golden Tiger. Retain the Unified World Tag Team Championship. Will it be enough? One, no. Min sees that Alvarez is getting into the ring. Why bother? Take Loco by the mask, dragging him into the corner. But Loco puts a stop to that with some elbows to the midsection. Gives himself a chance here. Closes that distance. Forearm smash. Into the gut. Sunset flip. Power bomb. Taking a deep breath. Getting to his feet. Not allowing Min to make the tag to Perry Heenan. Min got a really nasty cut alongside his right eye. In the corner. Tag made to Alvarez. Los amigos loco. Double snapmare, double kick to the chest. And an assisted wheelbarrow sent on. One tandem offense from Los Amigos Locos, tag made to Perry Heenan. Goes for a chop, 
Alvarez sidesteps him. Tries to go for a belly to belly. Maybe Perry Heat is just too big though. First STO, Ahin is shutting down everything Alvarez is throwing at him right now. And here comes the Impaler! Perhaps the final Impaler by Ahin. He wants to make sure the message is sent. Gonna finish Alvarez off with the graduation pile driver. Hooks the leg. One, two, but Loco swooping in to make this in the last second. It takes him out, Perry hitting this tractor for just a second. Alvarez tries to take advantage. Wait, he didn't go for another one? Another graduation power driver. This one countered though by Alvarez. Pick to the knee and again. Oh, by Heenan. Hit to the midsection. Into the corner. Heenan is set. Picks to the gut, trying to crack a rib. Just stopping a mud hole in Perry Heenan. Goes for the pin, desperate. Will it be one, two? Perhaps oh. even by that beard, but Heenan a dangerous man, even when he's on his back. Trio of knife edge chops. There's that knee to the shoulder. Beating up from behind, spins him around. Chop block takes down the big man. Loco back up onto the apron as Alvarez might have a chance to take his shot. The clutch, the clutch, the clutch, the clutch is locked in. The clutch is locked in. The clutch is locked in. He did tap. He did tap. Los amigos locos are the new unit. Amigos Locos take down chain reaction and secure the unified world tag team titles. What a match! What a result! Los Amigos Locos. with an emphatic win against Chain Reaction here tonight.
And here we are, my fine feathered friends. We have made it to the end of the line here at Battle Scars 8. It's been an incredible show. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Some awesome matches, some great moments, including the Ted and I beating the hell out of Machine Gun Kelly and Post Malone. I think that's the biggest highlight so far, but that's just me. But it is now made of a time as the workhorse Jeremy Barmore prepares to challenge the big dog, Pierre Thompson, for the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. This is going to be a great match. You can feel it. A first time encounter between these two and, well, a once once a wise man said, it'll be akin to two hogs slapping meat in that ring. Far more, of course, since day one, man, since he first walked out out of that stage and got out of that ring, there's been people in the same universe saying he's a future world champion. And he's come close a couple of times. Last year, of course, qualifying for that championship scramble but came up short. Barmore says it's not gonna happen again. He earned this opportunity here tonight by winning that triple threat match a few weeks ago, defeating Chris Diamond and Ace Reeves. Now here's his shot. It's in the, the palm of his hand. But in order to leave here tonight, leave Battle Scars 8, leave St. Louis, Missouri, as undisputed old heavyweight champion, He's got to put down that man, the big dog, the impact player, Pierre Thompson. This is Thompson's chance to break the curse. His first reign as undisputed world heavyweight champion, and he worked so hard for years, grinding to finally become world champion. Lost it two weeks later. Worked again to make it back to the top. Won that championship scramble we were just talking about to become a two-time undisputable heavyweight champion lost it a month later in his first defense again Pierre started the climb from the bottom all the way back up to ascendance 10 where he beat Michael Hoff to become a three time undisputable heavyweight champion and now here we are over a month later his first defense will it be three for three or can Pierre Thompson end the unlucky streak can he successfully retain the undisputable heavyweight championship? A lot of respect here between Jeremy Barbour and Pierre Thompson. Thompson saying he sees a, a younger version of himself in Jeremy Barmore. Barmore says, once that bell rings, any respect, any camaraderie, that's going to be put on hold because the only thing that matters to him is when that bell rings, his hand getting raised in the air and being handed that undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. Hot riding on Pierre Thompson here. A lot of people in the CM Universe saying it's going to be another, another disastrous reign for the big dog. But Thompson saying, you want this championship, you're gonna have to come and get it from me. And Barmore more than prepared to do just that. It's all about the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. Is it Barmore's time to shine or will Pierre Thompson make him wait a little bit longer? The workhorse. The big dog, first time ever. It's time to get it on, baby. All right, I'm gonna tie up Thompson. Gonna take the lead, dragging Barmore into the corner. Gives him a taste of that top turnbuckle early on. Counters that Irish whip though. Thompson out of the ring, back in before Barmore turns around, clothesline. Pierre Thompson for a man his size, deceptively fast. Barmore. Iron back at him with a head button and stomp to the bicep. Now going to try to crack open that coconut. Picking P 
air up. Discus, yeah, punch! Sends some spit flying up to the air, but Thompson gets right back up and runs down Barmore. That shoulder tackle. Stops in midsection, and it kicks the chest, now extends the arm. He drops the exposed bicep, big kicks the back. That just seems to irk Barmore, though, as he gets to his feet. Here, Thompson flailing, but thrown down by the workhorse. Two big lads. Fisherman's driver hooks the leg. Can you imagine? Not even a one count, though. You can see Barmore like, huh? Realize who you're in that ring with, my man. This ain't no joke. That's Pierre Thompson tries for a big boot, sidesteps at this Barmore. Taking him for a ride. Snake eyes. Getting him backward. The start of the match. Okay, going to target the back of the head. I mean, Barmore can come out of nowhere with that Barmore to belly of his. We've seen him hit it from pretty much every angle, every position. One of the more dangerous maneuvers in all of CMB today. Schoolboy sit out. Powerbomb goes for the pin again. This time gets a one count. Pierre Thompson has many, many ways. He can finish of course, has the play of the day. He's got the highlight. He's also got sudden impact. That nasty clothesline hooks the jaw, spins Pierre around. And Barmore with a lifting reverse. DDT, another pinball attempt by the challenger. One, two. count perhaps the next pin will do the job that was very close though point nine 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 is here drags Barmore back into the corner showing him what's coming close line just about decapitating Barmore as he falls out kick to the midsection again gonna go after that bicep with a knee drop Ooh, Pierre getting a little bit dirty with the uh, the eye rake there. Hey, when the championship is on the line, you got to be willing to do whatever you got to do to leave still champion. Barmore said that exact same thing. He said he will do anything to leave Battle Scars 8, the undisputed heavyweight champion, knee to the midsection. Once again, the schoolboy powerbomb. What strength exhibited by Jeremy Barmore. Dragon screw. targeting the bicep, and I think I'm realizing Pierre Thompson's strategy now. If he takes out the arms of Jeremy Barmore, guys, Barmore not to be able to hit the Barmore to belly. That requires arm strength. Very, very smart thinking on the part of the undisputed heavyweight champion. Tries for that right hook. Barmore catches it, though. Comes at Pierre with a headbutt. Quick kick to the side of the head. And another kick to the middle of the back. The play of the day, he's shooting for it, there it is! The play of the day lays out Jeremy Barmore. One, two! Not gonna be enough to keep him down. Pierre Thompson looking out at the fans. We're definitely split down the middle here. Pierre back on the attack, the highlight attempted, but Barmore giving too much time. The workhorse counters out of it. Blasted. Barmore knows he's hurt. Hooks the jaw. Slapped away by Pierre Sands. Get that shit out of here, son. Power number tie up. Who's the stronger? Jeremy Barmore slams him into the corner. Thrown out. And now Barmore going for a clothesline. He didn't get all of it, though. Instead, Barmore with a dragon sleeper. Dragon sleeper applied here on Pierre Thompson. Look at the way he's bending back. Pierre, literally in the back of his head, is touching Barmore's knee. But the big dog escapes with a few punches to the forehead of Barmore. Now an Irish whip puts him in the corner. Once again, Barmore counters. He's not going to fall for this a second time, is he? Yes, he is. Pierre, very crafty as he goes to the pin. Now it's Thompson hoping, praying. It'll be enough, and oh my lord in heaven, it almost was. 2.999999.
Pierre even getting in Murphy's face, saying, come on now. And ball Santana. Brings Barmore to his feet. Up against the ropes. What is Pierre cooking up here? Nothing good for Jeremy Barmore. Has him trapped against the ropes and clean knees getting in. The kidneys getting lit up there. And the last call. Stop out of the hand here. Thompson perhaps going to try to lock in a submission of his own. But Barmore pops off with an elbow to the midsection. Cheeky jab. Collar double tie. Throwing Barmore across the ring. That's no easy feat. Hopping on the face of Barmore. Want to see power? Pierre Thompson will show you. Deadlift, running, power slam, and the arms getting focused in on Barmore. Brought to his feet, realizing now exactly who he's in the ring with. Nasty Uranagi slam, another pinfall attempt for Pierre Thompson to retain the undisputed WWE Championship, and he does. Pierre Thompson is still. Champion, the curse has been broken. Pierre Thompson successfully retains the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. What a match between these two. A display of power from both sides. But I think Barmore, a bit overzealous. We saw how much he was going for the pin early on, again and again and again and again. Trying to put away Pierre Thompson early. But Thompson able to bide his time. Nailed Jeremy Barmore with a, a string of power moves there towards the end. That running power slam and then right into the Uranagi. For Pierre Thompson to retain the undisputable heavyweight championship. And you can see the emotion in his eyes. He's finally done it. He's finally proven that he deserves to be undisputed heavyweight champion. What a show. What a match. Thank you for joining me as always. Thank you for the subs there, Suntan. Yes, as always. Great way to end things. But until next time, my friends, I will see you when I see you.